Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Baltic Technology Ventures Investor Webinar. Today we are hosted by the CEO of Baltic Technology Ventures, Jean Zelatarev. We will start the webinar with company's presentation, which will be followed by questions and answers session. Therefore, all attendees are invited to participate by typing the questions in the questions box, which can be found in the settings panel zone. Jean, I invite you to start the presentation. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for joining this webinar and uh, uh, special thanks for NASDAQ Baltic uh, for hosting us. Um, we are especially proud of the fact that we are uh, the only uh, listed, uh, we will call ourselves a VC fund, uh, but we're a tech accelerator, early stage VC investor on the NASDAQ Baltic First North Index. And perhaps a, a, a tiny clarification. We we often interchangeably refer to ourselves as a, uh, as a VC fund, but I wanted to make it very clear, and it will become very obvious during this presentation, that we are not a fund. We are a publicly listed company. Uh, we've been listed since uh, 2013, uh, but on a, under a different name. But uh, the company has a long track record. Uh, with audited financials, and we have uh, uh, have had uh, you know the history of uh, tech investing, um, but we're not we're not a fund. We are a company that invests in technology startups, and this is what we're going to talk about. So before we start, and before we get into the various and there are many moving parts to our business, I wanted to highlight your attention on the two fundamental aspects that make us different and in our view better. So when we were setting up this business and we, there were two fundamental issues that we had to address. One is how do we uh, provide value uh, to uh, our investors or shareholders? Um, and we wanted to set it up in such a way that we have the full alignment of interests. And this is this in our way was in our view was not addressed by a traditional VC fund model uh, that um, uh, that is asking investors to lock up their their funds for quite a long time, seven to twelve years sometimes, um, and uh, uh, and also there is a tends to be a high minimum and there is a lock. Up. We wanted to address that and we wanted to to do it as a listed company where there is no lock up, no minimum, and no fees. So anybody that could buy a share on the on the stock exchange and become a shareholder and realize full economic benefit of the underlying portfolio. The second aspect of our business, which we wanted to uh, focus your attention on, and we, we feel that it's uh, critical to our success as a business, uh, is we were focusing on uh, how do we make those investments, and uh, we felt that the value proposition of a traditional VC model has a lot of uncertainty in it. Uh, you're asked to basically give your money to, to uh, people with uh, a certain experience, and uh, 10 years later, you hope to get it back plus interest. Um, we felt that we could do better than that. So our view was, uh, let's focus on the part of the curve which uh, is underlooked, because you have companies that are just starting out, that have no no clients, no uh, no uh, revenues, uh, they just have an idea, and that tends to be addressed by accelerators. They're the ones who teach the company how to pitch, how to get themselves organized, and how to possibly build the business. And that has like a 99% failure rate. And then there are VC funds, and they tend to invest at A round and, and higher. But in between the two, which is post revenue, pre Series A, uh, we didn't feel that there were like too many players, and that's the niche we wanted to fill. So we're looking out for those companies uh, have already uh, received either VC funding or who have gone through an accelerator program, who have a product or generating revenues, um, but they haven't scaled in any meaningful way. So their valuations are low; they tend to be in low single digits, and we felt that with our help, that we could move them low double. And we feel we can do it 
anywhere from two to three years. And that's our exit. So if we just focus only on this part of the curve, uh, we remove a lot of the uncertainty typically associated with the VC investment process. So with those two things, we feel that um, we, we, we are addressing the VC investment universe in, uh, in a more transparent uh, and a better way. So we deliver value to investors uh, by investing in, at the right parts of the curve with the right companies and, um, and exiting at the right time. Uh, and also uh, the way we're, which is a publicly listed company, anybody can become a shareholder. Uh, there's no minimum and there's, okay. So having said that, and having established that as the foundation, almost like a philosophical foundation of our company, let's dive in into, uh, into uh, a little bit who we are and what we're doing. So we are presently on the slide uh, that talks a little bit about the history of uh, w what we were. I think you one slide too fast. So can we go back? A couple of more. Yeah, perfect. So, uh, uh, so we 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 changed the name uh, last year and uh, focused only on VC before we were investing in telecoms and other things like that. So, at this moment, uh, I'm the founder. So, at this, at this moment, I control 98% of the company. Full disclosure, and that's why we're doing the uh, SPO, secondary public offering, to increase the free float bring in new shareholders on board and improve the liquidity profile. Um, once again, you know, we feel that we have the most efficient platform to do that, being a listed company. Uh, everything is fully transparent. Uh, we, uh, we fully disclose not only the companies we, where we invest, but also the companies where we plan to invest, with whom we have negotiations with, and we consider that our pipeline. And that's why we're doing the secondary public offering. So we have additional funding into the company so we can continue building our portfolio with like the exciting opportunities we have available to us. Um, so next slide, we can now go. So once again, uh, building on the two uh, main uh, fundamental cornerstones, which I'd mentioned in the beginning. Um, so our vision, we, we feel that we have a full alignment of interest with our investors. And um, uh, which is not necessarily the case in the traditional VC fund, because the traditional VC fund is uh, is a best efforts proposition, where you, where the the investor's money uh, is locked up for many many years, up to ten years in some cases, and um, management fees are being charged, um, and the outcome is uncertain. So sometime in the future you will get your money, but you can't really exit until the fund starts exiting. So that's not the case with us. Uh, we are publicly uh, listed. Anybody can buy our shares on the stock exchange. Uh, there are no fees that our investors and shareholders uh, pay. Um, so you become, uh, anybody who wants to be an investor will become a shareholder just like everybody else. And will realize the full economic benefit of the other. Uh, the second thing is we feel that Baltics is a great space and there are more slides to that effect. Uh, we focus only on scalable tech innovations. Um, we have uh, what we feel is a deep bench of talent where we can parachute different skill sets into the companies to help them scale, to help them grow in a meaningful way. And, uh, and let's face it, I think, we, it's, uh, I think it's a lot easier to move the valuation needle from one to two million to 10 to 15 then to go from 10 to 15 to 150. So, and that's what we're focusing on. We're focusing on that part of the curve where the company started to make money, but they haven't yet scaled. So next slide, please. So what's our investment criteria? Um, once again, I mean, we, uh, the universe of uh, Baltic startups is large. There are about 3000 companies in, across all three Baltic countries. And uh, uh, out of those, about 250 have gone through an accelerator program or received some kind of VC funding. Uh, out of those, about 150 are still alive. Uh, out of those, uh, roughly uh, 120 are, are actually having some kind of traction and market validation, some revenues. And out of those uh, 80, are not engaged in manufacturing or deep science 
which are not the areas we want to be in. We don't really want to touch anything that requires uh, complex manufacturing because it can be easily replicated someplace else and, and uh, technology can be stolen and, uh, uh, and it's very difficult to defend it. Um, or deep science, something that is once again can be protected by, by patents, which are not necessarily bulletproof. And uh, those companies tend to be further away from revenues than we would like. So that leaves us with a universe of roughly 80 to 100 uh, investable companies. And they're the ones we are working with on an ongoing basis. So not everybody uh, wants or needs our help. So to date, we have, uh, we now have seven companies in our portfolio and a pipeline of 15. And our goal is to lead with a small, uh, take a small equity stake in the beginning and earn more equity as we deliver KPI. Next slide. Next slide. Yep. So, uh, investment strategy. Uh, I pretty much have already said it. You know, we're we're focusing on those companies that we feel can be scaled, um, those that have the uh, already some kind of market traction and some kind of um, validation, and uh, they can benefit from our skill set. So investment cycle, yeah. So let's talk about uh, uh, Baltic uh, Baltic states. So why are we focusing on the Baltics? Uh, we we personally are convinced that it's absolutely the best VC environment, the best startup environment anywhere in Europe, possibly the world, uh, mainly because of the very high concentration of talent uh, and innovation and the history of innovation. Uh, second is the governments in each one of the country really doing uh, doing a good job in backing the company. So you get a lot of uh, a lot of financial benefits um, like tax breaks and and etc. Uh, a lot of government sponsored incubators are putting in you know seed money into into different companies. So it's fairly easy to get started in the Baltics. Uh, so as a result, there've been a whole slew of Highly, highly successful companies start Skype and Bolt and Bitful. Uh, some of the ones you, I'm sure, you've heard of, and some of the ones you haven't heard of, but you probably will soon. And uh, uh, but there's another very practical reason why we're in the Baltics and focusing in the Baltics is a long runway. It's it's cheap compared to, to other other VC uh, hubs. The runway is much longer. You know, a company with you know 500,000 or a million euros in startup capital can operate for a couple of years. And this would only last for a couple of months in places like London or US or, or Israel. So the, um, uh, we feel that the value proposition is unmatched. Okay, next slide. So let's, uh, kind of bring this issue home is why are we different and better? So I mentioned there were two uh, fundamental reasons why we better value than the traditional VC model to both uh, the investors and also how, how we, uh, we don't, uh, we don't charge, we protect uh, like for the companies, you know, we, we protect their IPs, we promote the company through our own media channels. Uh, we have a deep bench of talent. We can pretty much outsource any kind of skill set that the company needs to uh, to improve its sales and revenues and uh, and uh, just make the company more valuable. Uh, and for investors, once again, no management fees, no lockup. Um, you know, you invest not through you know, some kind of a fund structure, you invest on the stock exchange, uh, full transparency, uh, announcements. I mean, we, I mean, if you read the news feed, I mean, we announce pretty much everything. There's, so there's a lot of information about what we do and how we do it. Um, so there's absolutely opaque way of doing things. 
and uh, and and also one of the one of the features that we offer is we offer all of our investors and all of our people who are close to the company, like our uh, uh, what we call friends and family, uh, our experts, they can co-invest with us uh, into our portfolio companies directly. So there are two ways how investors can benefit. They can either buy BTV stock or they can co-invest with us in our portfolio companies. So next slide. So, okay, next one. Right. So. Building on those points I've already mentioned is uh, why would a company want to be a BTV portfolio? Uh, so we will, there are three things. One is fundraising. We will tap our vast network. We lead with the transaction. We put our own money first, and then we show it to our ecosystem and we fundraise the rest. Second is expertise and experience. Once again, deep batch of talent. We can help the company uh, develop, market their product, getting into new markets, partners. And third is promotion. We are uh, media channels. We own the Baltic Time and Baltic News Media. Uh, we have media partners through that, pretty much all the major markets. So with us, a company gets a lot of exposure, uh, both directly to investors and also to a general market. For investors, uh, we think the value proposition is unmatched, uh, especially compared to other uh, VC funds. So if you're interested in investing in capital, investing in startups, you pretty much two options. You can either do, but that typically means the, uh, well, at least for most people, the uh, the outcome is uh, tends to be less than favorable um, because there's a very low probability that your skills of your chosen investment, and that rarely works out well. So, uh, the other option is to invest uh, with a B, but I've heard what the challenges are. I mean, there tends to be a high minimum and there are fees, uh, and a lockup for a number of years. So for us, no lockup, no minimum, no fees. And also, when you invest in B2B, you get a, you get a diversification. You get an economic benefit of our entire portfolio that's fully we put our money in it first, so uh, investors can rest assured that our uh, risk alignment and also benefit alignment is full. We, if we make money, we make money together. If we lose money, we also lose money together. It's not like uh, we're 10 years down the road, you know, we don't produce the outcome on our investments, but we've charged the fees, uh, all for that's not the case. Next slide. So, uh, how do how do investors make money from from BT? Uh, you know, obviously the one is a stock price. So, as we develop, as our pipeline grows, um, we have uh, uh, so should the stock price grow. So as our portfolio grows and it's able to generate value, um, we feel that the company is that we, uh, there, there are two ways how BTV makes uh, makes money. One is uh, exiting the state, uh, but also uh, in, in all of our uh, agreements with all of our portfolio companies, we have revenue where if we help them generate revenues by introducing the clients or getting into new markets, we get paid for that. We have a revenue sharing agreements. So that is expected to produce a healthy uh, cash flow, which we're expected to share with uh, our our shareholders. So uh, so after a couple of years, we feel that we'll be starting to pay a dividend uh, in the year percent. Uh, once that kind of cash flow model stabilizes, and once the initial portfolio, which we expect to be around you know, 15, uh, 20 companies, uh, starts producing uh, this cash on a cash flow on an ongoing basis. So prior to exit, we expect to benefit from a, a healthy cash flow from those companies. We will share that, of course, with uh, all of. Them. Next. Ah, okay. Well, I've already discussed that. How we generate revenue. Uh, uh, we will. Uh, we will do it. Either. Okay. So. Good, you're moving on. Uh, so in the investment process, uh, there's no magic here. 
Uh, you know, we we pre-screen the companies, we uh, we meet with them, we do everything else, pretty much what everyone else is doing. Uh, maybe with one big exception is that we are not doing it from we're not doing it from zero, since we're only dealing with the companies that already have gone through an accelerator program and have received VC funding. Uh, to us, that had some fundamental benefit. So we save a lot of time by not doing some work that other people have already done for us. So then we just focus on the key things. You know, is our skill set a good match for what the company is doing? And are we able to scale it and increase the value in company? If the answer to that is yes, then we will gradually proceed with the investment process. And it tends to be quite quick. So these are uh, the companies that are in the pipeline that we are uh, still in discussions um, and uh, hopefully we will be uh, finalizing you know, some kind of an agreement with them for the next several months. And uh, these are the companies that already are uh, BTV portfolio company. Um, I don't want to go into each one of them, otherwise we're going to stay here all day. Uh, I can talk forever about each one of those businesses. We're very passionate about the investments uh, that we, we made and the future of the companies that uh, that we uh, take on in our portfolio. So uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, the information is completely available. You can look them up uh, on our website. Uh, and if you have any additional questions, just drop us an email or through LinkedIn, we will be happy to provide you with a full. So the company is run basically by a team of uh, people. These are people involved in day-to-day -day operations. So we have four full-time people, uh, the rest are part-time. And uh, uh, we, uh, we're obviously in contact on a daily basis. And uh, there are some divisional responsibilities, obviously, but uh, the team is uh, is working very well. We do a weekly team meeting where we discuss pretty much everything in, in as much detail as is necessary. And, uh, and then depending on projects, people just liaise with each other in different groups. And we have uh, what I say a deep bench of talent, which means we have, uh, I think now 45, uh, what we, we call experts. These are experts or mentors. Uh, so these are the people who are involved, uh, not necessarily in the, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but they uh, jump in whenever they feel that the company is a good match for their skill set and for their business, and they get involved on an ad hoc basis. So. We feel this model works really well because you know we're not really forcing anyone to get involved or to allocate a portion of their. Um, but they attend all of our internal pitches. They get to hear about the companies first, and uh, it gives them an opportunity to kind of apply themselves and their skill set based on whatever the company is doing. So uh, we've had a number of success stories where uh, some people have jumped in and you know have made a drastic uh, impact on the company. Now the next slide is. More, more of these uh, these individuals. So altogether, 45 for the time being, and it's growing. So we have a number of strategic partners. Uh, who are the strategic partners? They're either angel networks, other VC associations, uh, some funds that feel that there is a, a lot of cross pollination and cross referral going in. You know what they're doing and what we're doing. Uh, some of them are uh, setting up elsewhere. They're outside of the bolt and they're looking for a part. Uh, we aim to do that. So that's basically people who have somehow grabbed two BTV over the short period of time. Uh, by the way, that that's also growing. So almost every month, we're adding a couple of new ones. And uh, so you know, as we so is the recognition we have you know all over the world and. Um, uh, and Baltics, of course, are doing a lot of work for us. I mean, Baltic VC is going from strength to strength and uh, uh, more and more visible on, on a global scale, and we're benefiting tangentially from that. Uh, next slide. So, 
so uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, we're like I said, we're publicly traded. Anybody can get on a uh, on the page from uh, Nasdaq Baltic First North. Uh, they can look at our trading activity every day, um, and obviously subscribing to the SPO will uh, allow you know any investor to partic participate in this new capital. So this is new capital going into the company, so we can continue funding our pipeline, continue growing, continue delivering value. And that's it. So that's all for the presentation.